In this video, we're going to be looking at Piaget and Kohlberg's development approach to the conscience. So what happened is Piaget formulated his theory and then Kohlberg came and developed Piaget's theory, adding to it, um, you'll see six steps. So what we'll, we'll just go through what they actually said and then some strengths and weaknesses of using their theory in our day-to-day -day lives. So what Piaget did is he d differentiated between two stages of morality, heteronymous morality and autonomous morality. Heteronymous morality is for children under the age of 10. And what this is, is when children under the age of 10, they base their morality on how the parents, teachers, maybe God, whoever is important in their lives tells them how to live. So if the parent says, do not do this, the child will not do this because that's what the parents, parent has told. And that is basically how children do their morality. What he said is, after the age of 10, they start to develop their own sense of what's right, what's wrong. They start to uh, be able to make decisions without relying so much on what the parent has told him uh, or her. And he calls this autonomous morality. And what he says is, by the age of 16, 16 onwards, people should be able to make decisions without the influence of teachers, parents, anybody. So after the age of 16, they can do it without any of this influence. So in between, and he calls all of this autonomous morality. Now what happened is Lawrence Kohlberg, he was also a psychologist. Now he came along and he said, when we are trying to get to this universally ethical uh, moral conscience, you know, what he says by the age of 16, you'll be able to have it. There are six stages that you need to go through. And they start from right when you start having your um, heteronymous morality. So the first stage is obedience. Now this is where you just say, look, how can I avoid getting punished? Well, if I don't break my mom's um, favorite sunglasses, I won't get punished. Therefore, I'm not going to do it. It's the wrong thing to do. That's what you base your morality on. Once you've learned that practice of it, you move on to self-interest. So this is more about autonomous morality. You look at what's in it for me. What have I got to gain from not breaking my mother's sunglasses? Or, you know, that's a stupid um, activity, but any activity, what have I got to gain from this? And then you start basing your morality on that. Then you move on to conformity, where you start looking at what does society say a good girl does or a good boy does? I'm going to go and do that. I'm going to conform. I'm going to be part of the social norms. If society says that, oh, women are not allowed to work, I'm not going to work because that's what society says and that's what I'm going to do. That's the correct thing to do. What have I got to gain? A good reputation and I'll be avoiding some form of punishment. So you do like that. Then the fourth stage is law and order. You start looking at, it's a bit like society, but it's like, what does the law say? What does the high authorities um of a place say what is the justice system I'm gonna follow that then you move on to stage five now you start again to the age of um, 16 where you look at social contract what is the best thing for society is it best for me to go and get a job or is it best for me to be on benefits what is the best thing for society best thing for society is for me to get a job yeah I'm gonna go and do that and I'll get, you know, then you look at all the obedience, all that's at the back of your head. It's like hierarchy, but social contract is the main thing. Then only you reach the age of 16 and you have universally ethical princi uh, principles where you can make your own decision without the influence of anything else. And both Kohlberg and P Piaget's development approach argued that the conscience wasn't something that was innate it was acquired and it was developed through time and what they said is that Kohlberg in particular what he said is that not everybody is going to end up with this universally ethical um, uh, principles and conscience you know some people are going to fail and they're going to fail at the point at where they say Hmm, if I do this action, then I'm going to be caught and the consequences are going to be bad and it's not good for me. So they tend to f fall at the social contract um, 
stage and they don't achieve it most people don't but the people who do they follow their conscience this is how it happens so that was their theory so let's look at some of the evaluative points like what are the good points about using this theory well it's a universal theory like it's one of the few theories that I can from my heart say apply to both religious people and apply to atheists you do not need to bring God into this theory, yet at the same time, if you're a religious believer, you could say that the first stage, obedience and punishment, was to do with God. You could say, what's in it for me? Will I get a relationship with God? You've got all these things. You could use God as your higher authority and base the theory around that, and it works perfectly fine, and there's no clash between, is it to do with God, is it not? It's just a logical theory. Um it makes because it allows for mistakes so like Aquinas he they do identify that because this theory is as such you become from this to this you can make mistakes and for this reason it's very realistic and practical because in reality no one is born perfect and you do make mistakes it also agrees with Aquinas's idea that your conscience is manufactured through um, experiences and external condition although Aquinas was talking more in relation with God but the fact that it sort of uh, agrees with it shows that it has some value if somebody of um, a not secular approach is agreeing with the secular approach in that way it's a real real strength of the theory um, and it's also agreeing with Aquinas in the sense that children do not have fully um, developed conscience they need to wait till they're older and over time this happens one of the weaknesses is how accurate can you say the ages are could you say someone with mental problems um, not in a rude way if someone's got some mental disadvantage could you say that they too by the age of 16 will have a universally ethical principle than somebody who's a fast learner who's pretty bright can you say they're both at the same can you say that certainly by the age of 10 they will be entering autonomous morality it does not seem right to be so accurate um, and also his theory was based on psychological findings but many psychologists say this data was flawed because it did not take into account enough factors there is also no psychological evidence for the six stages that seems to be a theory based upon no evidence whatsoever and um, religious believers also argue that there is a third stage there's not just heteronymous autonomous this theonymous now this is where it's not to do with um, God punishing or rule or fear of God is to do with you wanting to have God's agape love that's why um, you do certain actions so this stage seems to be missing and religious believers think this theory cannot be correct without this but obviously if Piaget was to put this there then it would not be a universal theory no longer and it just seems a bit vague to me that where actually does a conscious come from they talk about it being manufactured from experiences and um, external conditions but like Aquinas gives oh it's from God this doesn't really suggest accurately where exactly does the conscience come from that is a sort of really a weakness for me because I just don't completely get it anyways I hope this video helps please visit my blog